Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a wireless lab for your CCNA studies. Wireless is a fairly big part of the new CCNA. It's uh, covered in most of the topic domains, including network fundamentals where they want you to know what a controller is, they want you to know the basics of how wireless works, and then a fair amount on how the WLC is architectured in its various interfaces and whatnot. Finally, it wants you to be able to set up your own wireless LAN. So what do we need to build a lab? The first thing we need is APs, because uh, no matter how we have a virtual lab, we still need a physical AP to connect to. So this is going to be things like the 3500, the 3600, and the 3700. There are a lot of APs available, but these are relatively cheap for if you're buying on eBay or at a surplus store or what have you. Next, we're going to need a PoE switch to power the access points. And this can be typically a 2960 type switch or possibly a 3560 with PoE. Generally speaking, as long as there's a P at the end of the switch name, it supports PoE. And then finally, we need a controller, which in our case for this video is going to be the virtual wireless LAN controller. Let's take a minute and just walk through the deployment options that are available to us. Cisco has five main options for managing your access points. There's the standalone method known as the autonomous AP or the AAP. We don't need to worry about this for the CCNA, but basically this is just an iOS router with some wireless commands added in. Another feature we don't need to worry about for the CCNA is the Mobility Express. And what this is a feature that runs on either a switch module or an access point, and it creates a virtual controller that can centrally manage your other APs. The wireless line controller is what we're focused on. It comes in physical or virtual options. Today we're going to be focusing on the Virtual, and the reason why is uh, because you probably aren't going to go out and buy a physical WLC for your lab, but if you do, then you get more options available to you. One thing to note is that the WLC runs its own operating system called the AeroS, and this is quite different from what we would expect on a Cisco router. To solve that problem, Cisco is moving everything over to the 9800 controller. And again, we have physical virtual options, and it can also run on switch modules. But this time, it's based on iOS XE, and it can do practically everything that uh, you could do on a traditional iOS XE switch. So that means you can do your routing protocols, and you can do your tunnels, and your VPNs. It's uh, a much better solution as they grow as maturity. The last option, which isn't really relevant for the CCNA, is the Meraki which is their cloud management solution. In the Cisco uh, Enterprise track, they don't mention Meraki much, but the automation exam does have some Meraki topics. So just to recap here, the only thing we care about for the CCNA is this guy here. Now inside the virtual wireless LAN controller, there are two interfaces that we need to be aware of. The first port is gonna be known as the service port, and this allows for out-of-band management, but it doesn't have a default gateway, so it needs static routes for it to work. Uh, typically speaking, we won't really need this for anything practical, So, but we do need to figure out when we install it. And then the management port is where we're going to do everything else, and this is where your management is, and uh, where your APs register. Basically, the management port is where it's at. We're going to have to have a little bit of a chat about architecture for this because a regular WLC has the access points work in what they call local mode. And what this means is that your APs at each branch here, like these guys and these guys, are going to form what's called a CAPWAP tunnel. And this is a UDP tunnel that uses port 5246. And all the traffic from the wireless client is tunneled over to the wireless LAN controller, where it is then dumped out. And then this allows you to have a central firewall for all your wireless traffic when it goes out to the internet. However, the virtual WLC only supports what's called Flex Connect. And what this means is that the access point is going to dump the traffic onto the switch it's connected to. And then from there, it depends on your routing table if it is going to 
route up to the router and then out to the internet. The advantage here for a practical design is that uh, each branch can have its own internet traffic and I don't need to send, say, guest traffic all the way up to the WLC for it to be inspected and sent out to the internet, so I'm saving some resources. However, the problem means that I want to have a firewall here at each branch uh, to make sure it's protected there. So uh, it depends on if you're comfortable with giving your branch its own unrestricted internet access and how you want to handle the traffic routing. But since the VWLC only supports Flex Connect, we need to talk about it. Practically speaking, there's a bit more configuration that we have to do. And the actual wireless LAN configuration is mostly the same, but there are some differences. So we just need to talk about it as we get there. With that in mind, let's go ahead and download our virtual wireless LAN controller. So on Cisco's site, you can go ahead and search for a virtual wireless controller. And then click on software here. And assuming you have access on your Cisco account, you can go ahead and download these. So the two main options that we care about is the small OVA with the trial and also the and also the small ISO with the trial. So the OVA is used for things like VMware and um, VirtualBox and such and the ISO is used for things like GNS3 or Viral if you want to throw that in there. One thing to keep in mind before you actually download a version there you might be tempted to just pick the latest version and download it but especially if you're using older access points for your lab you need to check the release notes and then if you look under supported access points you need to make sure your model numbers are listed in the release notes. So for example, if I clicked on 810 and then release notes here, what we would see is that my 3600 isn't listed here. I would have to use 3700s in my lab to uh, use this code. Just keep in mind that your access points may or may not be supported by newer code releases. So I've went ahead and downloaded the image and I'm just going to right click my ESX environment go deploy template. And I'm just going to call this VWLC01. And I'll just step through the options here. Basically I'm selecting my ESX cluster and it's validated in the contents of the OVA. We'll go next. Generally for a lab, you want to create VMs with uh, fin provisioning, and this is going to make sure that the VM only takes the space that's required. But in production, you want to use FIC provisioning to make sure that uh, the space is already allocated, and therefore you don't need to worry about uh, as much performance issues. Go ahead and hit next here. So remember, the first interface is the service port I mentioned that's going to be used for out-of-band, so we don't really care about that too much, so I'm going to put that to server two in my network. And then for the management port, I'm going to use server one. And then we're just going to hit next and then press finish. While we're waiting, I'm just going to open up my DNS and I'm going to go ahead and type in VWLC01. VWLC01, that's what I'm going to type. And then this is going to be 41. For my environment. Okay, now that's created, I can go ahead and start it up. By the way, it's a very small VM, so you can see that we have one CPU and two gig of RAM, so this makes it very easy to run this in other solutions such as VMware Workstation or GNS3 or Viral if you just want to have a more flexible lab. I'll go ahead and open up my remote console. And what we'll see here is that it's going to run for the install process and then reboot and take us into the wizard. So when it's booting, you do want to press any key when it says so there, so it knows to use the virtual console. What I'll do is I'll pause this and we'll have a look in a minute when it's ready for us. All right, there we go. So the first thing we have to do is terminate the auto install. So hit enter here. 
and it is actually a little bit hard to see, but it is actually asking us for a system name. So go ahead and type in the name. So it's going to be VWLC01 for me. Then we need a username followed by a super secret password. Then it's going to want to know the service interface IP. So I'm just going to pick static. And for my environment, it's going to be 10, 20, 12, 41. Uh, Submit mask. Notice there's no default gateway like I mentioned. It's going straight into the management IP now. So this one's going to be 10, 20, 11, 41. And a default gateway of 11.1 .1 for me. Now, uh, if you want, if you want the port to be treated like an access port, just type in zero. Otherwise, if you want the port to be trunk, or if you want the management port to be treated like a trunk, just enter in which VLAN you want to use for the um, management. I'm just going to go ahead and leave this as zero. And we have to pick a port, even though there's only one available to us. So just type in one. And the DHP address is not that important for a Flex Connect configuration, but I'll just go ahead and type in the default gateway. The virtual gateway IP traditionally was 1.1.1.1, and it was used for redirection stuff. But since that became a DNS server, we now use 192.0.2.1. The wizard is going to close things off by asking us to basically create a wireless network and some other settings. So I'm just going to brush past these there because we don't really need to know them for CCNA. The RF group is basically how the APs are grouped together. So I'm just going to type in test lab. And for an SSID, I'm just going to type in temp. And just generally be agreeable here. I don't want a radius server. And next we need to tell at which countries the uh, APs are going to be working under because every country has different wireless regulations. If you are not in the US or Canada, you can type in help. Oops, if I can type that is. And it will tell you which codes um, are allowed there so you can look up what's applicable to your country. I'm going to go type in CA because I'm in Canada. And then I'm just going to go ahead and enable the various wireless features. For NTP, I'm going to go ahead and type in my NTP server. And that's going to leave it as an hour for polling. I could choose to do IP version 6 if I want, but we don't really need to for this particular video. So I'm just going to say no. And I'm going to let it reboot. Okay, so now it's rebooting. Uh, there are a couple things I want to change before we uh, move on to the next section here. And what I'll do so it's a bit prettier is I'll SSH into the box. So this is the WLC in all its glory. Uh, like I mentioned, the CLI is completely different from what you would expect from Cisco. Uh, there are two things I want to do here. First is I want to go ahead and delete that wireless network. And the basic syntax here is config, WLAN, what you want to do, and then the SSID. Next, I want to go ahead and accept the licenses. So we're going to say activate AP count eval. If you forget to do this, you'll find that when you try and register your APs, they might not work very well for you. I'm going to leave the video here, and then in the next one, we'll look at uh, finalizing the WLC setup and getting some APs joined. See you there.